one of the things I will always encourage parents to do um, is to really listen to and learn from um, a, a lot of adults who may have had developmental challenges and met some of those developmental milestones much later in life, but actually are are doing well and have relationships and friendships and are able to communicate and interact. So, Andrew, a lot of parents are worried because of the way that their child is developing socially. Um, autistic children, as we know, don't develop socially in the same way and at the same speed um, as non-autistic children. And a lot of parents um, don't know how to manage that and don't know how best to support their child and are actually worried that the child's not developing at all. What would you say in that sort of situation to a parent who is worried? Yeah. That's such an important question, Guy. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a child, you know, my background is I'm, I'm a child development specialist. So, um, of course, I, 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 I see this, hear this all the time and really feel the, you know, the fear, the worry, the, the, the anxiety that so many parents carry about um, their child. Um, what I always try to help parents focus more on is um, really tuning into where their child is currently um, in in their every aspect of their development, but particularly their their development in terms of their ability to to connect with their parents, with anyone to 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 interact and communicate. Um, and sometimes um, what I help parents recognize is that. Um, the social world is is sometimes moving much too quickly for uh, a, a particular child, and so rather than 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 saying to a parent, um, you need to sort of push your child to interact more and connect more with you because you're concerned that they're behind. Um, I, I really try to help parents let go of some of that information that they've been given. Sometimes this can really backfire in ways that that greatly increase um, par- not only parent anxiety, but then parents, in some ways, um, feeling this incredible pressure and push to to pull their child into more interaction, more communication with them, which sometimes has the opposite effect. So I really start with with doing everything I can do to help parents you know, take some deep breaths and, and, and calm down and really learn more about where their child is and try to keep a lot of that developmental information that ends up translating into fear to sort of try to not pay as much attention to that. So do you think do you think the parents are, are, are right or wrong or is it more complicated to worry that their child is not developing socially and that might cause problems for the child in the future? Yeah, um, it's absolutely um, it's absolutely right for, for 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 parents to be concerned about about their child's development. I part of part of having a child, loving a child, um, and wanting the best for that child is it is care and concern about where they are, and 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 um, at the same time sometimes that that very very healthy concern can can take a turn when it's also fueled by a lot of fear and anxiety from again well-intentioned professionals and the system and sometimes other other family members sometimes friends and 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 um people you know other parents who 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 have children so i think the concern is 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 very healthy Right, the, the the idea that every parent has. I want my child to to thrive and 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 connect with people and um, really have the best possible life that that they can. And um, that's a wonderful and and healthy sort of impulse and hope. And 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 every parent has that for their child. Where things can start to go awry is with the fear and the pressure. 
of, oh my gosh, my child um, is, is not meeting these milestones. They're not um, moving quickly enough. They're not sort of turning out as I hoped or expected. And one of the things I will always encourage parents to do um, is to really listen to and learn from um, a, a lot of adults who historically themselves may have had developmental challenges, who themselves may have gotten the diagnosis of, of, of autistic and perhaps met some of those developmental milestones much later in life, but actually are are doing well and have relationships and friendships and are able to communicate and interact. They just didn't do it in, in this sort of uh, textbook way. And what I mean by that, in, in the way that professionals will sometimes say, you know, by two years old, your child should be doing the following. Yeah. By three years old, your child should be doing the following. Every child has their own unique developmental path. What every child most needs is just to be met where they are by supportive, understanding adults that are inviting them into um, interaction and communication in a way that's not stressful and overwhelming for the child. And that's the most important thing. And I guess I'm an example of what you said in terms of, of, of a person who's, who's an adult now who, who was autistic, but I didn't know I was autistic until the age of 46. Mm -hmm. So I had quite a, a very difficult childhood because I was functional, functional enough to go to school and to fit in. And, you know, mm -hmm. academically, I was I was fine. <laughs> um, uh, so but socially, I was what you pr probably objectively call a disaster. I, I didn't have any um, real understanding of what was expected of me socially. And so there was huge confusion and huge social anxiety. And I confused so many people. It went right through university and older because, um, you know, people thought I was either a genius or an idiot. Um, mm. and, and most people couldn't work out which one um, because, you know, there, there was it, it, the social side of things. I, I was just representing myself in a way that wasn't what they were expecting. And I think what made that difficult for me and what made it last so long i mean i i don't know if i relate particularly brilliantly now to people but mm. i think the reason that went on for so long is because um not knowing that i was autistic i was always assuming there was something wrong with me and that sort of piled on the pressure and the self-recrimination which is not a great um you know way of moving forwards and, and making progress so I think that if I'd had understanding and support and understanding of myself as well, that I'm just I'm, I'm autistic. That's all it is. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with me. I just have a different way of understanding the social world. If I'd had that understanding and that understanding was reinforced by people around me, people who are parents now, um, I think that could have. That would have freed me up. That would have removed a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the confusion and allowed that development to happen in its own way when it was ready to happen. And with me being more confident and comfortable that the way it developed was fine. It was just my way of communicating rather than picking out in myself any um, things that didn't quite match what other people expected of me and being hypercritical of, of myself for that. Does that make sense? Oh yes, my goodness! It makes it makes one hundred percent complete sense, Guy. I'm um, really appreciate you, you sharing all of um, those aspects of, of of your own experience, and I think that is oftentimes um, the perspective that you shared doesn't get shared enough, um, and and as a result. Um, again, parents can get into this mode of, 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 of pushing and forcing. And I, I would say most powerfully, what you just described is the message that parents ultimately send their children, I think unintentionally, no parent would ever intentionally want to send their child this message, but the message sometimes comes through as who you are naturally, like at the core, 
um, is is not okay. Yeah. Right. There's something. There's something not right with you. There's something wrong with you. And I see this over and over and over again with so many families that I work with and so many so many autistic children. Um, that message can 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 be received and then internalized in some very powerful ways. And I think the message that again I I always try to encourage families to send <clears throat> is is one of really deep acceptance that who who you are is wonderful yeah. and 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 who you are may not be may not match exactly the kind of neurotypical you know child development charts and milestones um that have been mapped out by professionals but that's okay because you're going to have your own developmental path and and i think the message too that that i wish professionals would encourage parents to send more to their kids you know much to your point guy is i trust you you know if parents were to say to their their children i trust who you are i trust you um i trust your thoughts your feelings who you are sort of on the inside like i i i really i i enjoy being with you and i trust you and i think that when children get that message and this is what i've seen in in my over the course of my career when children get that message um they just ultimately have a better outcome in terms of their self-esteem their their confidence <clears throat> and then their ability to move out into the world from a place of you know i have things to offer the world and 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 i and i and i and i want to share myself with the world yeah. and that's what i think we want for all of our children and i don't think they even need to say it if they genuinely have that faith in their child that the child is going to find their own way and that way is good enough and that not just good enough it's 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 brilliant <laughs> that way is their way and because it's their way it's perfect um if the if the parent really believes that then they don't even need to say i trust you because the child will receive i trust you and come same the other way around they don't you know if they don't don't believe if they're worried about the child if they think the child is not okay as you say um, they just need to think that and the child will pick it up and the child will imbibe it and the child will live according to that what we it's not what we say and what we do and what we uh, and how we behave it's what we think and how we perceive the child that makes the real difference mm. that is um that's so spot on and and i i think part of what you know what you're what you're you're lifting up even even higher is that it's not so much you know a parent doesn't need to say directly um precisely to their child you know i i trust you um but it's what what a parent conveys through their everyday interactions and exchanges with a child um and one of the one of the wonderful um lessons and, and opportunities that I have in, in, in my own work is I work a lot with, with, with um, parent uh, child videos. So, yeah. so families will send me um, clips of their interactions with their own children. And it's incredibly powerful for parents to have an opportunity to see um, moments when, when, when we can slow the video down, moments where they're just conveying to their child without words but just with their eyes or with their face or with their their body language i trust you i i enjoy just who you are in this moment um i i i, I hear what you're communicating to me and so often that's done not even with words but just by the way a parent takes in a child's initiative or or um kind of repeats back a sound, for example, that their child has made, um, or name something that their child has just done with a toy. And when when the child has that experience, they're getting that message from their parent. You know, daddy, 
daddy's with me. Daddy, daddy sees that what I'm doing with this toy is, is interesting and, and good. And, um, and it's, 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 it's okay. And it's, it's not only okay, but it's, it's, um, it's an interesting thing to dad. He, he enjoys it. And those are the building blocks that all of our children, that all children need. This is not unique in any way to having, uh, uh, you know, to, to being neurodivergent or, um, or autistic. Every child needs this.